السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أهلا وسهلا Welcome everyone This is Medina This is the last day we have in Medina Inshallah There you can see It's the green, famous green dome there Just the right see here. This is where you come to give salam These are the various doors by the way Okay, so it starts off with this one. This is door number one. You see that there. And then you have all these other doors. You have all these other doors, gates. You have all the other gates. So, some people see outside as well. Over here, I don't know how clear this is. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi as you can see, a lot of people gathered around. So it's quite easy now to go to give salam to the salam, but this is only something which is for men generally. Women, they don't have the access. Yeah, so this is how it is at night time, buzzing. It's all throughout the day, day and night. If you ever come to Medina, that's what you're going to see. Now, over here you can see these are minarets. Assalamu alaikum, Sadiq. This is like a random. So these are people very from various places. These are all hotels you can see. Hotels in Medina are much more easy accessible to the masjid than uh, Makawan. Makawan are really difficult. For instance, now if men want to come here to give salam, you basically see that over there there's a kind of the police gate up. You have to go all down the other side and you come around and you go through there all the way down and then you give salam. I don't want to record, I don't feel uh, respectful recording from the Prophet. So I'll do it for part of it. Uh, Member of the Ilm, Ahlu Wassalam, Alaikum Salam, Badal Alaikum Salam, please give our salam to the Prophet Salah Salam and his companions. I gave salam on you guys' behalf. Alhamdulillah, inshallah. If I go, hopefully tomorrow again, I'll give again, inshallah. Beautiful environment here. May Allah bring you guys here time and time again. This is a beautiful place. Amazing. As you can see, these minarets. This minaret is a famous Ottoman minaret. This is this one single one, and this is like kind of to mark the gate that you're supposed to go through. This is the uh, Babu Salam. They call this Babu Salam. There's many gates over here, by the way. I'll try to explain to you some of these. If you guys are up for it, inshallah, I'll give you a little bit of a sira, a short sira, inshallah, so that. You guys can uh, understand, inshallah. Yeah, so there it is, as you can see. So the masjid it was actually small in the time of the Prophet. This was not the masjid in the time of the Prophet. But it was actually extensions that were built late, much later on. Masjid was probably only like 60 cubits by 70 cubits. Yeah, it was that kind of squarish kind of shape. Yeah, and it was only like later on, about seven, eight years later, that it actually was extended. So, I'm going to try to show you guys as much as I can. So there you have Babu Salam, right? And obviously, there was no Babu Salam in the time of Salam like that. This was all built later. And then you have, so all around the masjid, there used to be the houses of the Sahaba. So from all sides, you can see the houses of the Sahaba. Now, whatever I'm point, whatever I'm showing you guys over here, this was not the house of the Sahaba. This was extensions of okay, the The houses would have been inside, inside. Now, you can see the women coming out. This is because this is the time for the women to pray in the in the rauda. So nowadays, if you want to pray in the rauda, is basically the area. I'm trying to show you guys from here. I'm going to try to zoom in. I don't want to put the camera on to women. Right, but, so it's basically inside there and there. 
it's like area it's quite far in this is between the houses of the prophet and between the between the member that's called the road that's where these people are trying to play and this was described by the prophet as being jannah part of jannah and uh, very beautiful inside you can't see from here i could show you or show you but i'll try to all do is maybe when i come back to the uk i'll get some pictures and things and then show you the real commentary so these were like yeah, so imagine now so you go inside there you gotta go quite inside maybe like about 20 30 meters that's when the original masjid starts and then all this area was covered by houses of the Prophet okay so over here you have the Khawkha of Abu Bakr radiallahu Yeah, so you can't see here, but inside you can actually see the Khawkha of Abu Bakr. The Khawkha of Abu Bakr is basically, so you see where it says there? Uh, let me zoom in. There it says Abu Bakr Siddiq. Yeah, Abu Bakr Siddiq. This is Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu house inside there. And everyone had the entrance into the house, houses, into the mosques. So because of the opposite of Bakr of the house, you had you know, the Prophet Sallallahu houses all on the other side. So this is known as the eastern side or the western side, and the other side is the eastern side. That's going south. The member is facing south towards Makkah. And uh, so this is where you can imagine the houses of the Prophet Sallallahu Sahaba, all around. And then you have over here Babur Rahma. This is Babur Rahma. Yeah, Babur Rahma. Uh, also known as, uh, I think it's also known as the Atika, Babur Atika. She used to have a house over here. And then inside there you have uh, the Ashabu Sufa had a place right about there. Where they used to have this kind of like a canopy and they would stay there. Ashabu Sufa were those people who were staying and they had no homes, staying in the mosque. MashaAllah, Zakhallah khair randomly. May Allah bless you, Ameen, Ameen. May Allah bless you and may Allah give you barakah in your wealth, in your health, in your time, in your efforts. Beautiful place, may Allah bring you here under me. So this was, uh, like I said, all of the houses of the Prophet Sallallahu you had. Almost, you can say, they came up to here. And then these, all these other extensions were then built on. So you can see these pillars after that, everything else was built on from here. I'm going to try to show, show you inside of it as well. Yeah, so late obviously it looks beautiful from the outside, but in the olden days it would have been very simple. A very simple place this would have been. No domes, no minarets. Minarets were actually built decades later. In the Umayyad time these minarets were then set up. Otherwise, as you can see, and I actually collect, remember I was telling you guys, I'm going to be collecting, uh, I'm going to be collecting, that's me, you can see me now. And I'm going to be collecting, uh, Hadith through the masjid, I collected them and actually went through all the hadith that I found related to the masjid. I wanted to actually do a recording and go through each one, but unfortunately, time didn't allow that. Next time, inshallah, I'm gonna hopefully, next time I'll come and I'll try to do something more structured for you guys. Yeah, maybe some more recordings for you guys. I've made some recordings of other things, which inshallah, when I get back, I'm gonna edit it and then hopefully. Uh, anything else you guys want to see, let me know and show you guys. So this whole place over here, as you can see, was not really the masjid before. This was actually the city. This is where people used to live. Yeah, so you had... Uh, I don't think I can show you guys this. But... It's because of the law women there. The, the houses of the Sahaba are here. Then if you go inside, I'll show you inside of this. Yes, so, so imagine this is the place where Sumama bin, Sumama bin Uthala was tied up. Yeah, this is where he was tied up. I heard a story about him. Three days he was tied up. And the Prophet Sallallahu every day is asking him, you want to accept Islam? Eventually then uh, he, he lets him go and he accepts Islam. It's that famous story from Mama. So you see this, you can see now you can see the inside of the mosque. This is obviously the extent, extension. 
but those kind of pillars over there, the lights on, that's that's like uh, you can almost say like the old sort of mosque. Love is extended anyway. And these are umbrellas, and they put these uh, partitions up because there's women on the other side. This is the time for women to come there and pray. So they put these up so men can see around over here. Imagine in this is where Masjid, where the Prophet said, Look, where the date palm, you heard of the date palm, the Prophet used to give a talk, and that was uh, a date palm he used to hold, his touch. And then when this lady built a member for him, three steps, he would climb on the three steps and give his talks and stop using the date palm. And the date palm one day started to cry because it's the Prophet. So, subhanallah. And then the Prophet touched the date palm and then uh, he buried it, cut it and then he buried it. Yeah, so this took place in this masjid. In this masjid, this is where the Prophet used to take off every year. Imagine that. Staying in this masjid, take off. This is where the Prophet used to give Jumu'ahs. This is where the Prophet Abdullah bin Umar used to stay. This is where wealth used to come to the Muslims and he would gather it in the masjid. So you can imagine, this is a place so many things happened. This is the place where remember this Bedouin who came to the mosque and then urinated in the corner. And then the Prophet Sallam kindly explained to him that this is a place for urine. Well, this was that. And uh, this was the place where Umar Radiyallahu was stabbed as well, on Fajr Salat. Yeah. And this is the place where the Prophet Sallam obviously his last days passed away. This is the place where the Abu Huraira used to stay. Abu Huraira the Yeah, he would stay in this place. SubhanAllah. So you see birds are still flying. They're confused. They don't know if it's daytime, nighttime. Birds are flying around. Imagine these lights obviously are a new thing now, but in the time of the Prophet Sallam, there wasn't many lights. There was no lights actually. It was only in the time of Uthman that the first candles were lit in the masjid. So this was an uh, amazing history this place has. So many things happened here. Can you imagine? What do you guys know? What events can you guys remember about Masjid Nabawi? That are, that are things that you can remember from talks or things that you read in the Yeah, this is, this actually masjid was actually bought, it was actually built on Mushrik's graveyard, graveyards, old Mushrik graves. And uh, it was actually Prophet bought it from two orphans and then moved the graves, the bodies, and then uh, built the masjid. He was one of the people that actually built it with his own hands. Please keep us in your doors, inshallah, and mullah, definitely. Energy back to start by Eagle and Smith and Nirash Guru lessons. Inshallah, I'll be back hopefully this week, inshallah. By Monday, inshallah, I'll be back. Uh, yeah, so this is Masjid al Nabawi, guys. This is the best of creation lies here. Imagine that the best of creation, the one that 100% we can guarantee that Allah loves him. And so, like all this history that took place over here, and all these people that have come. SubhanAllah. Yeah, so, there's like lots of Lots of things that took place over here. Let me just have some water, guys. Yeah. Yeah, so what, what, what kind of things do you guys want to see? Let me know, inshallah, in the comments. And if I can, I can try to show you them. There's always water. That's my right hand, by the way. Assalamu alaikum, Ihsan. So I hope you're able to enjoy the time. Come on, Masalaam Shalom. Inshallah. Inshallah. I will. Inshallah. If I uh, go back later or tomorrow, Inshallah, I will. Yeah, so. I mean, obviously, if you come to the Masjid now, very nice environment. This is like, probably the best time to kind of come. I would say. Night time is calm. Temperature is quite cool as well. This is 
place is buzzing, place is buzzing throughout the day. I don't find the right hand here, exactly, that's what I'm saying. Just in case someone starts throwing fatwas on me. Yeah, and I pray to Allah that Allah brings you here. Such a beautiful place. Sukoon, calmness. I'm gonna miss this place, guys. Make dua, I can come back here again. So this was uh, Masjid Nabawi. There were kind of amazing facts that we learned about this place. Um, there's actually a museum. They built a museum now that actually gives you the whole history of how the masjid was built from the beginning all the way till current day. That's another that's a good another feature the Saudi government have started. They're starting to document the history as well in an easy way so people can people can uh, watch it. And understand it visually because I think visual is very important as well especially when people come to Umrah there's a lot of like I think it's important for Sira. maybe in the future guys what do you think we do a roots of knowledge uh, Umrah trip and we have like a full Sira, a full Sira event yeah, yeah where I explain to you guys about the, about the Sira. yeah I'll be good I would like to do that Definitely. Yeah, all the nice places in the masjid, all the history behind it as well. I just give you like a little synopsis, but you imagine there's ten years of the life of the Prophet, ten years that took place here. So many things happened. Like for example, this is the place where uh, the Prophet وسلم, he sent out the armies for the Battle of Badr, the Battle of Uhud, the Battle of Ahzab. Uh, you know, Uhud is just down the road. Literally, if you go through gate 333, you can see, literally just see from the masjid, you can see the mountains of Uhud. It's beautiful. In fact, shall I show you guys? If you guys want to see the mountain of Uhud, I was thinking, is it visible because it's dark outside? I feel like it will take years to I'm worthy of visiting Makkah you Medina. Know? No, no, what do you mean years? You're not going to travel there by foot. Backwards with your eyes closed. And go there by plane is gonna take you a day or two to get there inshallah. Uh turn the camera around here, you guys wanna see? Okay, this is where I am. I'm basically sitting over here. This is the kind of open area outside. Then the grave of the Prophet is about there. Over there. And you can see all these designs they've designed this place. Amazing. Should I show you guys anything else? Is there anything you guys want me to show you guys before my battery dies? And I can't show you guys anymore. Let me know, inshallah. Yeah, so, if there's anyone that needs any special du'as as well, inshallah, I'm going to make lots of du'as here. You know, so. SubhanAllah, since I've been here, they have like, any dua that I've been asking for, SubhanAllah, it's like you can see it coming true. SubhanAllah, amazing. How easy now it is to get along in Medina and Mecca without knowing Arabic. Very easy. Very, so simple. I hardly had to use Arabic. Literally hardly had to use Arabic. You know, taxis, you can actually, you know, Uber, you can Uber it. Uber is very cheap. So you can go by Uber to places. Um, Uber is like, I think if you go somewhere like six, seven miles, it's about 25 riyals, which is about, which is about six pounds. Six pounds, five, six pounds. It's five, six pounds for about, for about, uh, yeah, five, six kilometers. So it's very good, so easy. You know, English, a lot of people can understand broken English. If you know Urdu, then most people understand Urdu. Because a lot of workers are from the Indian continent. Bangla. No, then you're, you're killing it, bro. How's the weather, Sheikh? Weather is very nice. Very, the morning is a little bit chilly in the sense that you have to wear like a, maybe a jumper or something. Uh, otherwise, very nice. Inside my Razai, it's cold here. 
Yeah, I know. Night time here is a bit not not too cold. It's just just need to bear up a bit. Yamna requesting du'as, inshallah. I will make special du'as for Yamna. Ismail, alaikum salam. Have you come with a group? Yes. Come with a group. Zakhla uh, du'as for better well being. Ameen. Peace in the family, for loved ones, and the unity of my Ameen, inshallah. May Allah accept your du'as. What does it mean in the That I feel like I just need to learn about Islam. No, no, no. Come, trust me. You come to Medina, even if you don't know anything about Islam, you will feel the effect of this place on you. Definitely 100% has an effect. You cannot doubt that effect. Everyone that comes here, they all admit it. They say there's a powerful effect in Makkah and Medina. And it just brings you so close to Allah, it brings you so close to the religion, love for the Prophet Wasallam. You see all these people, definitely I'd, I'd encourage, especially if you're young and you're healthy. Make it a regular thing. Try to come here as much as you can. There are some ways that you can actually book very cheap tickets to come here. Like if you kind of uh, go onto TikTok and Instagram and find out cheapest way to come to Umrah, people have these um, these ways of booking. You might have to struggle a little bit, like traveling and all that, but you can get like these are very cheap, cheap ones. Alaikum assalam, American Muslim. Ahlan wa sahlan. Mia, wa alaikum assalam. Ahlan wa sahlan, brother Mia. Long time no see. There are quite a few people I met as well. Subscribers, mashallah. Yeah, it was nice to see random faces attaching the faces to the names. Muslims now uh, know Islam is simply the truth. People of all races and shanties. Yeah, definitely. So many people here, different races and places come here but to go alone with a group for someone who's planning uh i would say if you if you're confident in traveling if you normally travel to other places kind of coming on your own is totally fine but if you want to kind of like get to know all the ropes then maybe going with a group for the first time might be good especially if it's a well-experienced group a good group leader then you can learn a lot definitely and then the next time you come on your own. Lady, that's quite calming to hear. I look into the booking stuff. Yeah, definitely. You are the best. Gara. Yeah, so we've been enjoying it a lot over here. So, as I was saying, this city is the city where Battle of Ahzab, this is where. The Prophet Sallallahu he injured himself and he was resting in his home for several days or weeks. This is where the Prophet Sallallahu passed away as well, very sad. This is where the Prophet Sallallahu married uh, several of his wives as well in this city. Shaykh, I heard you can't make dua of Palestine there in Mecca, is it true? No, you can. You can make dua, it's fine. I think a lot of stuff you hear on social media is exaggerated. Yeah, exaggerated. Uh, I haven't seen anyone causing a fuss. Please make dua for the fitan of my family to end and resolve. I mean, Ya Allah, accept the duas of Ihsan and save his, him and his family. Fitan, looking very grim right now. No one wants to work with. Allah forgive us and not test us. I mean, I mean. Is it true that cats are too common on streets in Medina? Uh, I haven't seen, uh, there's more cats in Masjid Aqsa than in Medina. I haven't seen too many cats. I've seen a few, not too many. I haven't learned how to read the Arabic from you. Ahlan wa sahla, mashallah. How are you finding the Arabic? Uh, I think because the guy using a phone and recording it. I know you can't use phone there. No, no, you can use phone there. You can use, everyone's using a phone, trust me. Uh, well, the first time I came, they were quite strict. Uh, this was like in 2009. They were quite strict on using phones and recording things, but now it's totally fine. You can record. Now, obviously, you know, you don't want to go around putting the phone in people's faces. But um, this is... This is fine. No one, no one has a problem. Everyone's doing their own thing. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Allah. I'm also granting invitations. Blessed and Amin. 
and a special dua, Ya Allah, accept our marriage to come at the time Quran circles in Medina. So, Quran circles in Medina, generally in the masjid, there will be lots of people who are teaching Quran. They actually have, and I should have recorded it, but they actually have regular Quran classes in Medina, in this whole masjid. After Fajr, after Asr. After Fajr, after Asr. I've seen live vlogs. I request to ask my peers and family how to have Iman. Ameen. Bush. Ahlan wa sahlan. Ya Allah, accept the du'as of Bush, Miss, and make her from those who are accepted in this dunya and the akhirah. Put barakah in her wealth and give her afiyah in her health. Save her and her family from fitans. You're welcome, Gara. May God reward you. Ameen. Ameen. Jazakallah khair. Yeah, it's nice and calm. Is this is a uh, like you can travel on the streets today? We actually went from they've actually made a route from Masjid and this Masjid all the way to Masjid Quba. So they made a purpose built walking route for it. Very nice. I actually got some pictures and some recording as well of it. And uh, I'm going to show you that. Very nice. They made it. They really kind of the government's really putting a lot of money into into these kind of things, projects. It's very nice, you can walk it all the way. It takes about 45 minutes, 50 minutes to walk it there. You can catch a, a buggy back. Buggies like, you know, those golf buggies, 10 riyals. Catch one of those back, or you can walk it back if you want. Very nice, and took some nice pictures as well. Yeah, beautiful. So they're, they're putting a lot of money into, into tourism and preserving these uh, ancient sites. So people can learn more about them as well. Oh, Mahdi comes soon. Shay will something good, especially in Palestine. Inshallah. Inshallah. You can see my head, guys. My bald head. That's the boundary. Uh, let my hair grow now. See how long it's going to take me for my hair to grow. Inshallah, guys. Look at that, that's the ceiling guys. Look at the lights, you can see. You can see kids playing as well. By the way, a serious question. Somebody really said that praying behind the Imam al Haram wouldn't be allowed due to their freedom. Choose your situations. Yeah, definitely. If as long as they're a Muslim, you haven't seen them do anything wrong, then pray behind real Muslims. Should we actually try to follow the Prophet and teaching in these matters, even in Makkah, Medina? Make dua for Palestine, Sheikh. Don't forget, made loads of dua for Palestine. Loads of dua for those as well. Yeah, so this is uh, this is what the masjid looks like at night time. Daytime it's packed out, as you can tell. Night time it's, uh, it's empty, quiet. And in the morning it's Tahajjud time. So around about 4.35, 4.40 is when the Azan of Tahajjud is given. When you come to the mosque, the mosque is quite packed, it's packed out. Spend time reading Quran, doing a bit of Tahajjur, doing a bit of Dhikr. Yeah, very nice. Irfan, ahla wa sahlan, wa alaykum as Have you been to do a ziyar of a taxi so far? See anything, seen anything you would like to tell us? Yes, definitely. So I've done the ziyarats before. So I've been to Masjid Quba, been to uh, Uhud, place of Uhud, been to some uh, historical gardens as well. Um, in Medina, I mean, around Medina, the, a lot of the history has been kind of, uh, unfortunately, in the past, it was demolished by the government. Now the government's decided to do a U-turn and now try to preserve whatever they have uh, to teach the people. So I would definitely say, if you come here, there are lot, lots of things to see. But what I would suggest is before you come, make sure you read up on your seerah, honestly. 
read up on Sira, listen to some 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 videos. Some, I might start making a series on Sira and uh, watch videos, read books, so that you have an understanding of what hap happened in this amazing place. The people in this amazing place, sacrifices that were made. Imagine this is this masjid is a place where there were soldiers that came from the battles of Badr and Uhud that were resting here. Battle of Ahzab, Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh resting over here, imagine. He was injured. And uh, there was uh, Shifa al Adawiya, famous Sahabiyah, who was actually a famous sort of like Qadi judge in the markets. There's markets the Prophet has set up in Medina. Uh, so there's like lots of history about this place yeah, and there's workers mashallah from Indian subcontinent all day just cleaning the mosque maintaining it fixing it they do so much to so see, see people coming now yeah, people from various countries coming uh, Ameen Ihsan Ameen I got shoulder length hair too. I'm thinking it's going to be great if I sacrifice the there and come back with shiny bald head. <laughs> definitely, definitely randomly. The Hajj is prayed, no, it's prayed individually. The Hajj is an individual. Hope I could join you now, but we are too far away, definitely. In the future, inshallah. In the future. Yeah, so. See, a lot of this has been built later on, obviously. But the old place is over there. That's where the old place is. As you can see. So as I was saying, there were like lots of things that had taken place here. Uh, in fact, the place where Abu Bakr who was chosen as the Khalifa, I'll show you that maybe in a while. I'll show you that place. Saqifa ibn Sa'ad. Ibn Sa'ad. And that was where Abu Bakr was chosen Khalifa after the Prophet passed away, remember? In this place, uh, in this place over here, behind all this, this is where the Prophet ﷺ, when he died, Abu Bakr came and then he kissed him on his forehead, and then he said, you know, you were beautiful when you were alive and you were beautiful after death, and then uh, he said, Ma Muhammad illa Rasul, Muhammad is but a messenger. Many messengers came before him, and he read the ayah, so. Then the uh, worker said to the people, whoever used to worship Muhammad, they know Muhammad has passed away. And whoever worshipped Allah, know that Allah is everlasting. Basically, the point was that people should not lose hope. People should not lose hope in uh, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ has fulfilled his message. Subhanallah, this was the place where it took place. Rajna. Beautiful. Go and make a video, inshallah. I will do that. It would be great to meet you one day. I gotta make sure to come to the UK, inshallah. Inshallah, with Ahsan. Inshallah. Yeah, so uh, very, very nice. I was actually delivering some uh, uh, Sira lessons to my lesson to the group. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do too many. I'm thinking in the future there needs to be like a more structured one. Maybe Roots of Knowledge can have a group, they can have like solid Sira lessons, Shamai lessons, so that we can... I personally like to study things visually. Yeah, so when we see see all of these things, it makes a lot of sense. It kind of uh, sticks in your memory as well. What do you guys say? How for series of support do I supposed to make among the people of Jannah the Dawah's ease and mercy? Ameen, Ameen. Inshallah, Inshallah. See all those arches going all the way down. Alright, so should we go around Sheikh Mosafa? Okay, so let's. Uh, Go around from Bernard, the signal is gonna get disrupted as we go around. I'll try to show you guys. These are a lot of chairs they have, people can use these chairs. 
I should sit down if someone gets tired sitting on the ground. Visual lessons at the Maqam. Maqam is a very good idea, people. Next video, definitely. I'm not Muslim. I'll be watching your videos, though. The building looks amazing, more inspiring. Thank you very much, Damiano. I hope I said your name right. Sad I got asked by the way you got recommended to my uh, brother who I met online under one of Shira Khan's videos. Student of yours in classes, his name is Zain Khan. Yeah, if it's the same Zain Khan that I know. Definitely is a good student. Mashallah. Look at that, look at that small world there. Eh? I met some, mashallah, some YouTube subscribers from America, from South Africa, from uh, Europe, from UK. Mashallah. These chairs are where they have lessons. They have these durus lessons and in the morning time. Is that Sheikh sitting on there giving lessons? See the chandeliers as well. The workers are always there fixing everything. He lives in Dubai and said, Ah, Zain Khan. Yeah, I think it's another Zain Khan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I know who you're talking about. Any idea if we can follow the Imams, pray behind the Imam from extension of Makkah? Yes. Yes, you can. Yeah, Makkah's good. Yeah, you can. Extension is massive. But Alhamdulillah, facilities are really good. Really great facilities. I'm living in Germany, by the way. So we're not. Actually, guess what? I met? I met a guy from. I think it was. Uh, was it Sweden or Norway? Yeah, I'm sure he comes in the live stream sometimes. Met him in Mecca. Living in Germany, by the way. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu Hamza. Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan wa sahlan. I may have 1,000 disagreements with KSA, but one thing I told you about them is how they maintain the blessed places. Alhamdulillah, definitely. These guys are doing a really good job. See, this is this is Bab of Badr, gate number 19, or door number 19. Yeah. Let me try to show you. This is the hotel that we're staying in. As I was see, hotels are literally all four sides of the masjid, literally, on all four sides, hotels. So you don't have to walk too far. Hotels, you can get very priced hotels as well. First time I've been able to make a street, Australia with time conversation. Yeah. Yeah, Hamza is unfortunate because of the timing. See, some of the people sleeping here. So peaceful, so nice to sleep here. Amazing. And guess what's here, guys? You won't believe what is here. Locust are here. I'm going to try to show you guys. Locust. You know my favorite food? My favorite food, guys. You can find that here. Flying around. These locusts. Some of these are like... The size of like your finger, you know, the tip of your finger. Some of them are the size of your whole finger. And I, I, will, I keep every time I go past them, I keep thinking, you know what? I have to record these for you, but I can't seem to find any at the moment. Yeah, so you guys saying to me, locust? You hate locust, but Medina's got loads of locust. Sorry for the lack of knowledge. What is going on there? Okay, so let me explain to you my brother Damiano. This is, so in Islam, we believe in prophets. God has sent prophets. And the last prophet that he sent was a prophet called Muhammad. This is the city that he lived in. This is the city that he 
actually died in and he's buried here as well so this is like you can almost say one of the most historical and one of the most holiest places in islam this is known as medina it's in saudi arabia so this massive mosque you can see has been built over the years but the prophet sallam we call him peace be upon him is buried here and by the way guys this is gate 20 uh, 22 20 to 22 this is known as the King Fahad Gate, yeah, if I'm right. And this is uh, where you can exit from here. And then right opposite here, you guys, you can literally go straight through all the way down. From here, obviously, I'm going to go there. And then on this side over here, right over there, you can't see now, I'll try to take pictures of the day. That's where Uhud is, the mountain of Uhud. You can't see in the camera. but camera images are too clear I zoom in. that's where the Mount Uhud is yeah and it's a massive range anyway it's not small so Muslims come here Damiano they come here regularly to visit to remember that our Prophet to pray to God as well pray to Allah and uh, this is where everything started this is where islam basically spread from yeah this is where islam spread so this is one of the places of pilgrimage you can almost say there's another famous city which is known as mecca that's where if you've ever seen the pictures of the black building black cube building known as the kaaba mecca that's that's about 200 miles 250 miles south of here yeah, this timing is relatively easier for me to catch. One, oh, 1 20 a.m., yeah? SubhanAllah, still late for you. Yeah, Allah. Yeah, so this is, this is that. Now this street, for those of you guys who don't know, this is like the food street. It's got like loads of food shops and, and it's got this international food that you guys can check out as well. Over here. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is the one side of the of the mosque. Okay, now we have another side of the mosque where the graves you can't see the graves. I don't know when the grave timings they allow you to win. But um, I think they do some working over there. I don't know. Yeah, so this is like the back of the mosque. Behind. And then if you go straight down there, you go right to the front of the mosque. See this that. It's a locust. See that? You guys got to see three locusts. Zahallah Khair reading story. Before fucking off, may Allah make us financially healthy and contribute uh, to please Allah and accept it to be invited to the best place. Ameen, Ameen, Ya Allah. You know, anything. You make dua to Allah, anything can happen. Thank you, Spani. I really want to learn more. I grew up a Christian, but I have always believed Jesus to be a prophet, not God. I believe the Quran is the one holy book and hasn't changed. Inshallah, inshallah, God willing. God willing, my friend. Learn, learn about Islam. If you have any questions, inshallah, you can ask us. Yeah, so, okay, so let's go around. What do you guys want to see? Let's see what I can show you guys. These are all shops, obviously you don't want to spend too much time in the shops, you want to go around the masjid, you want to see what's happening over here. Yeah, she found these things around here, enjoying themselves. So under this masjid there's actually a massive car park massive car park underneath and car park I think it's about I don't know 20 20 reals or something you know, 20 reals is it it's very very cheap put it this way it's very cheap it's only a few pound an hour or a few pence an hour rather 20 30 pence an hour 
so car parking but on some of the days the parking is crazy especially on the holiday holidays are tuesdays and fridays yeah so as you can see the old people this is like now it's it's about quarter to 11 isn't it yeah so this is basically what This is requesting for du'as. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make Aisha's du'as accepted. Give her success in her exams. Put barakah in her time. Bring her close to Allah. Save her from calamities. Give her afiyah. Ameen. This is what random people do over here. Yeah? Randomly give things to you. <laughs> Guys, giving out dates. Why are Jews and Muslims at war? I think it's not in war, I think it's. Unfortunately, on both sides is politics. I think it's Zionism, Zionist entities that are the ones that cause a lot of problems. I mean, you can see on the news itself. It's very clear now, especially the new what's come out about Mossad and Epstein and all that. So look. By the way, on average, he examines steps I've been, I've been taking on average uh, on a daily basis. Let's see who guess how many steps have I been taking. The Makkah was knackered. Literally, my feet had blisters on it. So tired. But alhamdulillah, now I seem to have got used to it. I think when I get back to England, I'm going to have to continue the daily walks that I do. 15,000. Yes. Average is, I mean, right now, how much have I done right now? I've done, a, yeah, about, so between 15 to 25,000. That's average, 15, 25,000 steps. So we're looking at about 10 kilometers of walking a day. So I would suggest if you guys are thinking of coming for Umrah, then what you should do is uh, get used to a bit of walking beforehand. Just walk daily for about half an hour or so, half an hour, 50 minutes, get used to it. By the way, these are gate numbers, okay? Just in the red gate number so you know it's good to know these when you're meeting people telling where people to meet up good to know all that okay so you have let me show you some uh, let me show you some outside Family will disown me, but Allah has called me. Inshallah, inshallah, God willing, my brother. So please also make dua for my mental health. Uh, for a long time, it's been looking. There's no. Uh, inshallah, I will make special dua for you, brother Hassan, tonight. Special dua for you, Mike. Inshallah, and tajud. Special dua for you. Okay, so see this whole area, they've kind of paved it all. And there's some cats in the distance you guys can see. So a lot of work taking place. As you can see, massive area. Subhanallah.
welcome, if so, you're welcome. It's a mat. So good to see you there, Shay. Enjoy this man there. May Allah accept your reward you. And you keep in du'as, inshallah, with my brother in front of me. I will. Nice cool weather. I think it's about uh, two, 19 degrees, 20 degrees. Down south is fairly warm. You guys love hot weather. Serious in the winter. Think about coming to Umrah. Okay, food wise, I think food is probably a bit of a challenging thing. You have to kind of walk a bit to get some decent food. The love uh, fast food and shawarmas. If you're not really kind of into fast food and shawarmas, which I'm not really kind of too keen on that kind of stuff here. Uh, then you might have to walk around a bit. Just You can use Google Maps to find restaurants and outlets to eat. Uh, Hamza, so please make dua for me to have means to visit Makkah, Medina. I have never been yet. Inshallah, my brother Hamza, I'm going to make special dua for you as well. Uh, ya Allah, bring Hamza, your servant Hamza, to Makkah and Medina very soon. In a way that's pleasing to you, Ya Allah. And give him barakah in his bowels. Ya Allah, I mean. Look at that, how nice he is. Imagine that. Here, with your family, chilling out, kids, enjoying themselves. These are the beautiful places. Love these places. They love running around, not on their phones. That's a good thing. Just seeing kids enjoying themselves. And then obviously in Medina as well. You can't explain the happy feeling you feel in Medina. Like uh, it's, it's kind of uh, numbing, it's like numbs your heart, numbs your mind in a good way. You're welcome, Damiano. Okay, these are some of the gates. Let's see what else we can. This is literally a place a woman on her own can walk around and she won't feel intimidated by anyone. Imagine that. Two o'clock in the morning, she can walk around. She won't feel intimidated. Peaceful. Uh, apparently, it's one of the safest cities in the world. Well, Saudi generally is quite safe. You go to hotels, you can see lit up. May Allah bring all of you guys here. Definitely, inshallah. In the future, inshallah. I'm going to hopefully inshallah think about doing a roots of knowledge trip to for Umrah. So hopefully you guys can have this experience as well. Okay, these are toilets by the way, yeah. They're all scattered everywhere. We've got men's toilets, women's toilets, and there's also uh, car parks underneath as well. So I see a lot of people. So these are water facilities, they're not Zamzam -zam, by the way, they're just water for people to drink. Let me show you the route to these buggies they got here. 
Uh, let me show you the route to if anyone wants to go to Masjid Quba. So you can see over there. That's where I was earlier, remember? By the dome. That's where the dome is. There. Just about to see it. Okay, these are some historical mosques. You got like the Masjid Al Bakr, Masjid Al Hamama. So these are like mosques that were built later on. Uh, because of certain things that took place, historical. So that's what you find a lot over here. They have a mosque. That mosque might not have been there in the time of the Prophet but later on they built a mosque because it has some historical significance, that piece of land. You're welcome, Adib. If this is Medina, it's peace and As of later, we cannot even begin Comprehend how it was from the process of time. Yeah, definitely. You in the first time you come here, you will definitely get emotional. Trust me. I've, I haven't seen anyone who doesn't get emotional when you first come here. Even if you come here, you no, know, like me, three or four times, you will still feel the emotional attachment. It's powerful. Very powerful. Okay, so where did it start? Okay, it starts from. I want to show you guys the route, okay, to Masjid Quba. And then I'm going to show you the Rauda from the outside, and then that's it. This is the place where the Prophet used to walk. Imagine that. How powerful that is itself. This is Masjid al Ghamama. Okay, you can see the lip. Masjid al Ghamama. Yeah? And then from there you take the road, which is opposite, and then it takes you all the way to Masjid Quba. Nice step up. Really spectacular. You're welcome, reading. You're welcome. I mean, I mean. Obviously, this is outside the masjid, then you don't get the same feeling. See, there's buggies there, these buggies take you to Masjid Kuba. So, the Kuba buggies, you call them. And you go straight down the road, and that's it. You get to your destination, it's quite long. I don't want to go on there. It's going to be long. Plus, I don't know how long my battery 
is left. Please, buggies, get on there. Take it to Ashok Kuba. Show you the route as well. Remember last time I went for Umrah? I don't know if you guys remember. Actually, you might not remember. I made a video as well. See, this kind of tells you exactly where the stops. We will just come from there now. That's basically it. All you have to do is just go down this road. And that's where you go. Yeah, so next time you guys come here. Enjoy it. In the morning, best time. I'll send you to put some pictures on the telegram, show you guys what it was like. And that's how you can see the masjid here. These are all like food stalls, food. You can have food over here. All of these. All right, son, take it, inshallah. Take care. All right, guys, everybody, take it. Uh, hopefully next time I'll probably see you is uh, in the UK. May Allah bless all of you, protect you, make dua for a safe journey for us. And uh, put barakah in the time that we have and accept it from all of us. And allow us to come back here time and time again. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum.